positive representation of the film Mientras Dure la Guerra, While at War, which was projected within the official section of the San Sebastian Film Festival. From the right to left, Domingo Corral, producer, Carlos Serrano Clark, actor, Natalie Poza, actress, Santiago Prego, actor, Eduard Fernandez, actor, in the center, Alejandro Amenabra, Amar, uh, director, Carra Alejalde, actor, Patricia Lopez Arnaiz, actress, scriptwriter, Alejandro Hernandez, and finally, on my right, the producer, Fernando Bovaira. You know how w we work things. Now, please uh, raise your hand on the second row there. Hola, buenos dias. Hi, good morning. When we finished, the, when the film was finished, do you decide to add a series of explanations of how everything finished or ended up? And the last was the recovery of democracy in 1977. I don't know whether you wanted to add it with the following, the following by, by add by saying we, we continue with the same sham. No, I think when the, to finish the film with a writing which re says that we returned to democracy in 1977 is just to remind the Spaniards that we're living in a, de a state of democracy and that's our habitat, yeah, habitat, that's our neighborhood we live in, that's what we have to manage. I think the rest is implicit in the film itself. Hi, good morning. You now, you've just talked, I would like to talk about the beginning, you've just talked about the ending, but I'd like to talk about the end. You go from black and white into color with the flag. I would like you to tell me whether you believe in, the, in these last, in the, as of late, there's a threat, quote unquote, that we can return to black and white, initial black, going to black and white in the film well. Well, it, the film draws attention to a phenomenon which is obviously the increase of fascism. Fascism, we thought that it formed part of mythology and films, something that was extinct, but and we're seeing once again that extremes positions are coming back into power and positions that I personally uh, concern me, political positions, uh, this great passion, lack of respect, for example, in these positions. I'm, uh, I'm, opti I'm an optimist. I don't think that should come back, but I think the film does refer to our present day. It alludes to our present day, better said. Hi, good morning. My question was for Santiago Prego. I'd like to know how did you prepare to play Franco? We saw Franco, which is quite different to Franco that we've seen in audiovisuals in the past. Well, the, Santi Prego, I, so different. Well, it's for you because you're young. I've seen him in audiovisuals in the Nodo, in the newsreel, and it's quite similar to what I saw him there. Um, that, and having said this, my preparation for, was six months with Alejandro to portray Franco from January until the month of July when we started to shoot the film. Well, working above all his, with his voice, Alejandro's approach was to try to find his voice. I think for me it was very smart because in the voice was the mask of the character. Once you use the voice like this, your body takes that position. Once you grab that, that voice, it took me six months. And once you got the voice, the rest was really just to play with the character. But it was six months of tough work. I think you were referring to other different uh, interpretations of Franco, portrayals of Franco. Not Franco. Not what you're different to poor Franco because you're the same as Franco. But he's referring to other different portrayals of, of other characters that have done of Franco. So it was very different. I think you're referring to that. And that's all. Initially, we wanted to go further in depth into the character and to humbly give a serious and deep uh, portrayal of Franco. We were trying to get into his head, really. Another question here, yes. Congratulations for the films. I think that we all should be feel congratulated to the film. Not a, it's a necessary film, I believe, because now we're talking about the regime of 1978. But um, it seems that this film, with this subject matter, I don't know whether the title, which focuses on a, a little piece, a little a little detail, which is, and the black and white you've already talked about, and as the flag 
trans transits into um, color and it talks about a certain system well the actors that are all of you are, do an excellent uh, por your portrayals are excellent marvelous but there's some gestures like Franco uh, similar to the El Cid on that wooden horse and at the end and the ending and the script the truth is is very skillful by choosing the the figure of Unamuno is a contradictory intellectual who changes his ideas in religiously and, polit and polit politically. He doesn't convince anyone because he, think he says what, he's, what he believes, what he thinks at each time. So what's the question? Yes, just to congratulate you and whether... Have you got the idea? Don't you have the idea that, that you were thinking that all of this is being reproduced again? The extreme, extremisms, what, what you mentioned already, well, the film was written by Alexandra and me three years ago, and the truth is, it was in the drawer for quite a, some time. I think it's pertinent today, and it was pertinent three years ago, but now that it's premiered now in today's politics, it's even more pertinent or pertinent or inopportune that is to say specifically speaking the deep connection with the current affairs we didn't have that in mind the truth is what floats in the air these extreme political position in spain and obviously it's not only in spain but it's worldwide we're seeing it hi good morning i would like to ask you it's a general question for everyone what type of sources have you used in order to recreate this period, peace, as contemporary sources, or historically uh, research, and especially how you've used those sources in order to turn it into a uh, to turn it into what we see on the screen? Well, let's talk to the producer. Let the producer. Well, this film approaching historical uh, facts. We couldn't be frivolous in that sense. Uh, no dramatic licenses could be used. All of our documentary research was being was exhaustive. We've had adv historical advisors, Julian Casanova, for example, and military advisors, and Alejandro Hernandez have done extensive personal documentation. We've had not had any advisor upon the figure of Unamuno, but we have read all of the books apart from Unamuno's, uh, the books about Unamuno, about his figure. And, and Alejandro has uh, made, give, given a suitable portrait of Unamuno. The last scene, which is more controversial vis-a-vis -vis the mythology that exists behind it, I've tried to read everything that has been written, all the testimonies, and it's not too difficult, even from a detective almost, like what was said and what wasn't said, what was happened, which doesn't necessarily coincide with what appears in the film. The dead, Miala Strain starts up was, a point where Muna Muna was talking was, but to explain who Ana Rizar was, it makes no sense. But we tried to be faithful to the spirit of what was happening and be very careful with the phrases that everyone speaks and what's quite clear after reading all of the documentation and there's a full book dedicated to that morning session is that Unamuno really caused havoc with what he said hi I'm from Salamanca so there for a while I was watching the film I saw the streets and that's how did you manage because there's a lot of traffic did you talk to the city council to, to set that up well in a shoot shooting a film Obviously, you need cut off streets in Madrid or in Salamanca. And the City Hall of Salamanca gave us a lot of help. And the truth is that the Salamanca that we wanted to appear in the film is of Salamanca with a court curfew. Apart from specific scenes, there, weren't, there wasn't too much there. We wanted streets that were almost desert, deserted. And the biggest problem was the, the main square in Salamanca. We spent two days shooting there and the collaboration of the city council hall and the establishments there and uh, yes the university the museum the family of unamuno have been great collaborators in this project hi good morning alejandro did you ask for a helmet to to get into the this minefield of a film which 
it's like a a, a, a a sporting risk almost. And there's a jump in time from the directors that talked about the Spanish Civil War of a generation back then. And now it seems that you coincide with the infinitive, uh, the infinite uh, trench, which is another film, and Sordo. Do we have to continue to talk about the Civil War? Well, you always wear a helmet when you make a film. You've got to be prepared for everything. But that's what filmmaking is about. You make it, and people may have their opinion. I've prepared it in depth, and I've written it in depth as well. And I remember talking to Fernando Moveda, my producer, when finally Movie Star was going to support us to to make the film. The tr and we said, do, do I have the need to get into this? And there's a moment where all of a sudden, if Miguel de Unamuno was able to get up, why can't we get up and make this film? So therefore, uh, and you wear the helmet and you go ahead, vis-a-vis -vis coincidences. Well, it's true. I think it, there's a generational leap here. It's another generation that's talking about the Civil War. We grew in the transition period. I, in the 1980s, I was still a child. And the truth is what surprised me about the episode of Unamuno, Unamuno himself, who I, that I studied at high, in the primary school and the Civil War, I knew nothing. All of the uh, the plot about the coup, the military coup that Franco carries out, I had no idea about this. And the truth is you realize that all of our generation has gone through the Civil War on tiptoes, has gone through it. And it's good to know for a country, undoubtedly, its history, because the more you scratch on the surface of the story, you find more links to things that may happen again. So therefore, I do understand this call to attention of a new generation about events that were horrible and not so far in the past. Congratulations to all of you. Above all, before anything, congratulate Natalie Potha for her involvement in the animalist cause. I'm always surprised that in a shoot, how you share the issue of defending animals with the shoot. Could you explain that a bit? And, and Alejandro, I would like to ask you whether in, in a philosophical or methodological sense, do you believe you're a sort of an unamuno of film? I've got my arguments, but I would like to understand yours. Thank you. Well, what have you... Do you want me to talk about animalism here? And this... Well, how do I... How do I... Well, no, simply I've just discovered it over the last few years, and it's important. But I'm not a vegan, by the way, so that, I don't think this is the place to do it. Let's talk about this later, if you want. The dog that appears dead in the film is not a real dog, right? It's a dummy. You were saying, no, no, I wouldn't dare compare myself with Unamuno. The truth is, I like to go free. I like freedom in my life and in my career. But... Unamuno was more than that. Unamuno was a great thinker in Spain who questioned everything he saw and everything that he found. He was like a he was like a a brilliant uh, people who was nonconformist. I identify myself with a character. He, it was so moving what he did at that moment of his life after having spent those two or three months at home in that internal turmoil, knowing that he wasn't being consequent with his whole life. And he chooses the worst moment, the most inopportune moment, to put a bit of coherence into his life. And I think that's moving. As a public character, if I would have done that, I dare say I probably wouldn't have. Hi. For Alejandro... What you mentioned before about the things that you didn't know about the Civil War, that an entire generation, we didn't know about the Civil War. Could you go further in depth? You've more talked about Franco as the military coup within the military coup. Um, other things uh, that are not sufficiently, do you believe, that are not sufficiently clear, clearly spoken and Carra, do you believe personally it was difficult to maintain that equidistance to the character or uh, to understand it? Do you think it's possible when the blood hits the streets, for example, to maintain that, to maintain that position. Uh, that was the last question was for me, not the first one. Organize itself. I don't agree with the equidistance uh, of the character. Well, you were saying, no, the civil, everything surprised me. 
the title of the film is a part of an important, very important document where Franco becomes a head of state and the way in which that phrase disappeared in that text, it turns out that it almost becomes a political thriller. But the idea that the militaries or a faction of the militaries didn't go against the Republic, the Republican flag still flew in Franco's headquarters. They go against the government of the Republic and Franco's ploy of changing the and re recovering the monarchic, monarchic flag and bring all the monarchic people with him. I didn't know that in depth. And then there's something that has reinforced things in the, in the film. Obviously, we've got a country, in this country, we've got an identity problem. We've got a problem with our symbols. That's why it was very important for me to confront the uh, spectators with the flag, with the hymn, that sequence that we haven't, didn't come to agreement to sing the same song, the same uh, national anthem, and the flag where Franco brought back, and which I think, in fact, that's where a lot of the problems come from with our own identity. I leave it there, like saying, telling the spectators, this is what there is, what you see is what you get. What are we going to do as of now? Um, this is what portrays us like a community of neighbors. OK, yes. Let's hope I answered the question that I didn't hear very well. But I think I have an intuition of what you were trying to say. My, I don't, too, I don't try to be equidistant. I'm an actor. I try to be an actor. An actor doesn't address those things. These are questions for the director. The actor, what he has to do is to be an instrument in the hands of the director. Study the character for which I read things about him, but I was more interested in what they said about him because sometimes we transmit and, or, and portray and we're transmitting in a certain color and it turns out that the color is ultraviolet. I don't know who he thought he was. I know what people said about him and that helped me much more and many other things that I use when I research the character. Okay, my mind is a. I'm a left wing, but my I'm very lazy. Alejandro, I knew that I did a lot of research about this character, and he would tell me. So therefore, for me, it was very comfortable. It was very a lot of work, a lot of uh, makeup, and I thank the people in the makeup and the people that have helped us, and even Alejandro, who who told me which way this character should go. I didn't have to concern and keep that equidistance. And obviously, and I had a great time. And obviously, when uh, when you're having a great time, it doesn't hurt. As regards to what was said before, in the there was a lot of laughing when Franco appeared in the film theater. I don't know whether you use that as a comi comi a comical relief, or you realize that when you were shooting that you couldn't do it any other way. I wasn't into this morning's projection, but we tested the film a few months back. And I think Franco produces, um, um, it's, it's misconcerting because these voice, these problems in his diction, he didn't have the way, the, the manners of a person who was going to take control. Um, Franco, obviously, that little dead fly or flea turns into something that isn't that. I don't think there wasn't a lot of laughing about Franco at the end of the, at the film. Like I say, I wasn't, uh, didn't see the film this morning. Uh, we didn't want to, to give in to that ridiculous side of Franco because I think it forms part of the character Franco had. It was very hard-headed and he had to overcome that little squeaky voice that he had and that uh, shyness that he had. We wanted to play with that in his character. Hi, first of all, congratulations to the cast and crew. The, uh, um, the portrayal and the actor's uh, work is magnificent. As regards to the script, I'd like to know in a where legend and myth are flying over the top of the everything that happened, hovers over everything that happened. How did you work to decide upon which day you were going to use because the line of the portillos or the rabaten or zonas, Severiano Delgado, all of these, what was the difficult decision that you had to make, I imagine, of portraying how the confrontation was on the day or in the Paraninfo, in the, in the, uh, and then also how the film has been received. I saw there was an effusive reception in Toronto and the, the, uh, today in Cursal. Uh, uh, how do you think it might re be received in an exalted sector such as that of the Legion? 
and the legionnaires whether they go and see the film that is to say well as regards to the legion but no but the association of ex legionnaires we receive calls and messages and i think they haven't seen the film and the truth is i don't know whether they have the intention of seeing it but for me entering into that process of what happened as i said before was very exciting and what you see is you discard a certain uh, sources of information luis portillo for example has uh, there's a lot of mythology there and i've got all the notes here because i've written it the article of severiano delgado precisely what i like is what he discards leaves out as mythology because what i'm interested to know is but what was truly said and he talks about the biography the life of don miguel of emilio saltedo that book is written during the franco regime and if you take that source that book as severiano delgado says it's the most reliable source of information the beginning of the speech is word for word as has carras says it so that was a very important source of information in general not only the scene uh, in in that room but the only part of the film where we see dead people we were discussing that with the legionnaires walking by were they going to be civilians or militians or the militia there were moments where different uh, jiminy crickets for example sometimes our advisor historical advisor didn't didn't coincide with our military advisor as much as possible for example where I don't commit the message of the film or commits what I want to tell about Unamuno or commits the words of Unamuno I prefer to I prefer to not overdo things because because I didn't want to offend anyone but always I insist I didn't want to com compromise or jeopardize the message of the film hi good morning and congratulations to all of you the truth is it recognizes us as Spaniards and I think that's necessary but above all to talk about the air scenes which were incredible we finally see planes Spanish fl planes or oh, Spanish technology in the air in a way which is uh, well done and especially in the portrayals Eduard and Carra and the rest of the cast and Santi how do you how do you get, see, get empathy with the characters of those people that you put into action? Do you become empathic with them? Do you come to understand the characters? How was all that? Because at the end of the day, uh, as a person, it, it might be bittersweet. I don't know. Or you may be able to understand your characters at the end of the day. Well, very quickly with the planes, there's two technologies. The technology of the planes, which were German planes. These were the Junker plane, Junkers, that the Nazi government gives to Franco so that they can cross, this, so the troops can cross the, the Gibraltar Strait. The planes are obviously made by Twin Pines and it's digital. And these were magnificent shots and the rest, it's up to you. In order to play uh, uh, Mia Emaste, whether I became empathic with him, yes or no, it's a great opportunity. They offer you a great project with a great director, with a great script. So therefore, for an actor, that's marvelous. And they offer you a great character, historical character that existed. So therefore, you've got to adjust yourself to who he was. He was quite extreme, Miyana Astre. And you have to go there, but not go over the top, but be up there. He was quite histrionic. It, to become empathic with him and understand him, yes, I looked at aspects of his childhood, for example, of Miguel Astre, Miguel Astre, when he changed his surname of, from Terreros to Astre, going from the land to, the, to heaven, and he was mystical about what, everything that was tangible. I think that he wanted to redeem the figure of his father all his life. And I think that, frankly, he's something who's ideologically very far away from my personal ideology, but I can only portray a character if I don't judge it. If I judge a character, I can't portray it. I can't get to his soul or heart. So therefore, we, we put a mask on, we're changed. Kara and myself, there was a lot of time in makeup. And with Amin Amar, what we said is, do a max mix between the actor and the character so that the humanity that we can have can be portrayed in the character and can be a person who's a real person and not a caricature. I enjoyed myself very much with Miguel Astrain. It was a great gift and I did it with all absolute respect and I had a good time. Thank you very much to the entire cast of the film here present. 
for answering the questions of the journalists. Let's leave it here. They've got an, an enormous agenda ahead of them. Thank you very much to all of you.